And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. One of my favorite games is the Quacks of Quedlingburg. And I'm assuming it's also one of your favorite games. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be watching a review on the second expansion for the game. So the first expansion, Herb Witches, is fine. I don't think it's a necessary expansion for the game at all. But it is a fun diversion. And if anything, what I liked most about it was it had more ways to use the chips for the original game. I play with the first expansion occasionally, but the base game itself was a lot of fun for me. Well, the second expansion is here now called The Alchemists. This adds a new phase to the game and also adds a little bit of extra stuff. So let's take a look at what this expansion adds and then we'll talk about it. All right, let's take a look at the main part of this expansion, which is this Alchemist flask, which fits in here. Now realize this is gonna take up a lot more space on the board. And you have an essence marker, which you'll put here on zero. At the beginning of the game, you're going to either pick or randomly pick. And if you randomly pick, you're just gonna put these in a bag and pull three of these patients out. Once you pull them out, you're gonna find the matching board for these patients and put them on the table in front of everybody. So we have the witch's hump or the earworm or carrot nose, whatever it might be. Each player has four cards that are double-sided to match the eight different patients in the game. You're going to pick one of the three patients. Let's say vampirism is one of the patients. I can pick that and put it here. Everybody can pick the same patient. You can pick a different one than other people, it doesn't matter, but you can only pick one of the three possibilities. Once everyone's done picking, then we no longer really need the boards, except the board kind of tells you what to do and how your board works, and you don't need the rest of your cards. Now, once the game starts, there's another phase at it called the essence phase, and this happens after you're done pulling chips. Quick side note here, the chips that I'm using uh, in this game come from Board Game Geek. I've upgraded all my, my uh, chips that I pull here, so that's why they look like they do. But let's say this is what I pulled at the end of a round. So the essence phase, I'm going to move this marker up based on a number of different color chips, not the cherry bomb white ones, the color chips that I have. So I have green, yellow, and orange, so I'd move this up three. You then get to move it up one if your cherry bomb total is exactly seven, three, four, five, six, seven. It is seven, so I get to go up another one. And then you get to go up another one for each of your immediate neighbors, right and left, who have exploded. So let's say one of them exploded, then this goes up to number five. So everyone does that. Once you're done, before you do the victory points and everything else, you're going to get the reward of where the pipe leading to your thing. So this one, for example, leads to the seven here. So this, for example, lets me get any chip in the game, adding it to my bag, that costs seven or less. To see the higher it goes up, the more, if I get all the way to the end, I can get a chip that's 14 or less. Over here, I'm going to be able to get victory points. Um, the carrot nose here is going to let me reduce my essence and put the pumpkin I just drew back on the next ruby space instead of the usual number of spaces. So this gives you a special ability besides letting you move up a rat token on your next turn or getting victory points. This one here just has a whole bunch of different weird bonuses you get. This one lets you draw more chips from the bag after, and your bag won't even explode when that happens. And so there's all sorts of special abilities that they'll give you or bonuses based on how high you move it. So that's the main essence no pun intended, of this expansion. The expansion also comes with more of the white chips. This is for those of you who've worn yours out, which is pretty much anybody who plays the game. And I'm also really excited that it adds more of these cards that you'll be able to stick in the game, the event cards. Now, some can only be used with the last expansion. It marks that or only with this expansion, but most of them can just be thrown right in. And having a greater variety of event cards to me is a fantastic thing to do. It also comes with Loco Weed. Now, Loco Weed was in the first expansion, and then it comes with two boards for Loco Weed. So, Loco Weed doesn't necessarily have a number of spaces on it. It will tell you how far it moves. It usually moves one, except here, this is equal to the sum of the values on the white chips in your cauldron. That's pretty awesome. Or this one, the number of different colors you have, which is also pretty awesome. This one helps you in the essence phase. For each local weed you have out, you move your essence marker farther one. So if you're playing with the expansion, this works really well. And this lets you throw a colored chip back from your cauldron in the bag, and you might draw it again. 
So that's what's in this expansion. As I said, these boards, they fit on pretty neat, um, but you need to keep in mind that it is gonna take up a lot more table space. You have these new little tokens here. I do like that they added these in, um, even though, again, you really should upgrade them if you like this game at all. These are okay, these cards, the cards are good quality, but you're gonna have to look in the book a lot to see what everything does. The artwork on the different patients is funny. I mean, it's like forgetfulness and wing ears. And it tells you some stuff here. I, I, I like the art fine, uh, but again, having three of these on the board is also going to add even more space to the table. But I'm kind of just being nitpicky here. The components are fine. I do want to point out that I think it's if you have these upgraded chips and you have the other expansion, fitting everything back in the main box is nigh impossible. If you don't have the upgraded chips, I think you can pull it off. This expansion, just like the first one, I'm gonna say I don't think it's necessary. I wouldn't say, oh, if you have this, you gotta get this expansion. That being said, I really do like this expansion, and I think I enjoy it more than the first one. The first one, you had these coins, and you would use them once per game to do something spe special effect. This one here gives you something you're doing every round, and also gives you a focus strategy wise. There are expansions for games that do this often across gaming them. A very popular game, Seven, uh, Seven Wonders, has an expansion called Leaders, and Leaders gave you kind of a focus as to what you would do in that game. It was an expansion that helped focus your strategy. This does something very similar. This says, hey, you, you're gonna get free chips from the bag. You get to pull more chips from the, at the end. So maybe this is the kind of chips you should buy. It also encourages diversity in chip pulling. Instead of saying, I want a whole bunch of yellows, you, and you still could do that, I might say, ooh, I might want as many different colors as I can to move my token up on this track as far as I can. So the disadvantages here, it's more effort to pull out, set up, and it takes up way more table space than the original one did. It really does. Uh, the last time I played this, I, I was like turning things sideways, just trying to fit everything on the table. I also don't think I would ever play with both expansions at the same time. That's just too much extra stuff for a game that's pretty simple and fun. But that being said, if I'm picking just one expansion, this is the one. I like the fact that you there's eight different ways to play this, essentially, but you only have the opportunity to pick three over the course of the game. It doesn't really affect you if you pick one and if everyone picks the same one, which is possible. But if you pick one that's different than everyone else, you're kind of like, ooh, and it will always seem like the one other people picked is better than yours, I feel. The extra cards, fantastic. That's great. And if you play the game a lot, your chips are wearing out, so you're gonna need to replace those white chips. The Loco Weed was my favorite thing from the first expansion because, hey, it's another kind of chip. So that you can stick in every game. I, you know, I play with Loco Weed now, even if I don't play with the first expansion, just because it's another chip, another thing to do. So, yeah, if you own Quacks and you don't have the first expansion, you don't need it. I would skip it and get this one first, and then maybe go back and get the other one. Again, there's good things in both. I love the six pumpkin chips from the first expansion, but this one's great. My biggest annoyance here is trying to fit everything in one box. I don't like usually using multiple boxes for games, and fitting it all in the same box can be problematic, but that's a minor thing. Again, if you're watching this, you've already tried to figure out that solution. So that is The Alchemist, a fun expansion for Quacks. It takes the game in a slightly different direction without diluting the main process of the game, which is good. Um, you're playing an extra phase, but it doesn't feel like it's an added on, tacked on thing. It, it's a nice flow, frankly. It's easy to do, and it makes, when you explode, it helps your opponent just that much more, so you might think twice about it. At the same time, it might cause more explosions because you're trying to get to seven exactly white chips. Either way, check it out. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment approved.